Getting better, managing your ship and defending it all alone. What if you already know how to do that but want to push the boundaries and break that virtual skill wall you feel like you cannot cross? I'll show you the most powerful way to do that, increasing the difficulty bar to 11 so you can control the seas and get re I mean, learn the hard way. So fuzzy here, sit back, relax and enjoy. Too lazy didn't read version of this video is, raise a reaper flag, put loot on the bowsprit and show off your shiny vessel. Just like a mosquito light zapper, it brings all the hoppers to the yard and sometimes they're better than you. This way, you always have your senses maxed out since you have something to lose, your ship and the loot, while making sure you do everything yourself from bailing, looting, stealing, navigating and strategic maneuvering. I have encountered a galleon and a legendary brigantine right after the galleon ran away. First, I could have sunk the galleon, but I usually like to play with my food which gives me more room to negotiate, experiment strategies, spare some enemies and become the law on that server. In the end, it's a role-playing game and I'm role-playing as final boss. I'm the best solo slooper in Sea of Thieves because my mom said so. After the galleon ran away twice, I have moved servers to be greeted with a legendary brigantine, leaving my loot behind. Three pirate legends, ghost sails and all the scary stuff. But of course, dealing with that is different than dealing with an average galleon crew. So what precautions should we take? Planning should be dynamic and related to their style of play on first contact. So now we have the four steps of keeping our sloop afloat, especially against larger crews. 1. Studying the enemy playstyle. 2. Keeping my ship in a sloop-friendly neighborhood. More on that later. 3. Dropping their morale accordingly until they are ready for the final blow. 4. The final blow, which relies heavily on your location and current supplies. So first, let's gather information about the enemy and their playstyle. I've seen crews loaded with chain shots and cursed cannonballs, but they never use them. However, this one uses chain shots, causing my presence on their broadside to be a death sentence. I am solo, if I'm gone, I am done. As they raise sails to get better aim, I move to the right. As mentioned in my cannon aiming guide, their chain shot will curve to my left based on their turning angle. If they got me right there, it is a high chance it would be the end of me. I'm so glad they missed the mast, honestly. I got 90% scared there. Still, that chain shot hit my wheel, completely wrecking my turning ability. It's not good. I had no choice but to try and repair the bottom deck first in case I died. Now that we have someone on board which uses a blunderbuss, it's time to social distance. But also, there are lots of hidden strategies that happen on each encounter. Notice that he is already standing by the ladder. The blunderbuss is already loaded, even though it wasn't when I jumped in the water. Wait, I remember. Which means he did not have time to eat and was low on health. So, he was done. I remember that. That his health wasn't uh, good. And he didn't eat. He just went to the ladder very fast. Oh, feels good to wheel. After a few exchanges and encounters, one more step is required to gather information about the enemy. I'm giving something fun. I decided to lure them to the arena tavern trap to test their awareness and knowledge about world cannons and their locations. And this is what I call a sloop-friendly neighborhood. Somewhere where you can attack the enemy using other means than your sloop's cannons. Come this way, please. Yes! Do it! Looking at them, when a ship raises sails, it means they are waiting for you to make a move that they are expecting or at least hoping for. They wanted to block me from the front of the tunnel since they have full wind. Or perhaps expected me to continue straight so they can change out me from the starboard side, followed by a board. However, this was beneficial for me as I did an unexpected sharp turn to the left, causing them to tunnel vision and ignore the surroundings because they feel like they're almost there. As you can see, I'm right here and they are entirely unaware. Come on! Oh! Man! <laughs> Flame Art, who invited you? <laughs> no, that wasn't a chain shot, that was an actual... Oh, that's why there's trash talk. I perform a sharp turn to the right. Since the brigand team got full wind, it will cause them to go right into the heart of battle. Come on, harp on me, man. Hopefully helping to overwhelm them, to drop their morale further. how this go? How's that going now? Whenever larger crews feel like they almost got you but fail continuously, now you can play with Flameheart. It usually causes their plans to start becoming less organized and more chaotic, opening more windows for you to strike through. And here's proof. Some people literally tunnel vision and they, they just don't think of anything anymore. Chase me exactly like that. Quick to the ladder, man. Quick to the ladder. 
You still didn't... Wow, it worked again? The same exact trick works again around 15 minutes later, giving me another sign of their current order. How's that? How does that feel, bro? Although I did not board this time, these guys tend to observe ladders. One is waiting here, on the right, and the other is patrolling while both carrying blunderbuss. It, it surprises me sometimes when a crew falls for the same trick twice in a row. We're getting closer to the final blow. When getting your mask dropped, it's essential to grab it before it starts falling. If it falls all the way, hard luck for you. Notice I was already standing by the ropes after expecting it as a possibility. Position your pirate in specific locations, like bowsprit or canopy when someone is boarding. The large blunder bombs, man. Close to the wheel when chain shots are flying, and so on. Now it's more manageable for one to manipulate three enemies than the opposites, since higher numbers in Sea of Thieves usually tend to brute force and not use strategy as much. That's why you typically see the best creative plays from sloop crews. With this, I try to perform what I call a yard board. You know, cannons make a sound, so using the yard will provide me the distance I need silently. But first, to test if I can board yet. Ooh. Now that they said bye, I have to return the favor and say bye back. Keep, keep waving. As a pistol user, blunder bombs are my form of ladder defense. Attached to my hotkey. I'm just, I just want to make sure they don't launch someone. There is someone. However, if you use the blunder bus, you can quickly shoot a boarding pirate if they are not careful. So the way you defend your ship depends on the weapons you carry. Sorry, man. This is the most guaranteed way. Because I don't have a blunder. Blunder bus. Ah, uh, they're starting to get overwhelmed, by the way. Because in the beginning they have ideas, then when the ideas don't work as much, no islands or cannons around me to maneuver. So this is not a sloop-friendly neighborhood, and I cannot board them for two reasons. First, they are good at observing ladders, which is annoying. Second, we both have wind. So if I die from a boarding attempt, which is highly likely, <sighs> now they have wind, they will be on my ship by the time I come back, since the brigantine is faster with the wind. So the only chance I have is to face their cannons with mine. With that in mind, I decided to go with the final blow. The most essential item to use right now is the blunder bomb. It's more effective than a peace ball, and especially against the brigantine. The thin and low top deck makes it easy to knock players off and move them away from their cannons. It's my top priority, since their cannons are the only tool that can be used to harm me, as mentioned earlier. Being in their cannon range is my death sentence, so disabling that is disabling their whole ship. Now to the board. I know they have holes in the bottom deck, and maybe some are knocked off. So this is a window where the crew is distracted from watching ladders. I luckily ended up knocking over two instead of one with my sword lunge. Then anchoring, because keeping the ones in the water close to their ship will cause them to swim here, preventing their mermaid from spawning, giving me much more time to fill their brigantine with salty waters. In addition, causing the only way they can get to the top deck is through the ladders, which I can successfully guard. Please subscribe if you enjoyed this video so I can create more. Good luck with your solo adventures. Fuzzy here. Happy sailing.